Hey, it's Dr. Fee, and today we're talking about burnout and when you feel wired but tired and our best strategies to help you to get an amazing night's sleep and wake up feeling rested. Stay tuned. Hi, it's Dr. Fee Enkelman, and I'm so glad you can join me today because I have the gorgeous Lucy Mason with me. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and we're talking about being wired but tired, burnout and sleep. And if you're someone who has been experiencing that nightmare of I'm incredibly exhausted, just let me sleep, let me sleep, let me sleep, and it's never enough, or you get to sleep and you wake up, you're experiencing that feeling, oh God, I'm tired, but yet my brain's still switched on. What? Then tune in because this will help. Right, Lucy? Yeah, lots of goodness to come. <laughs> so look, there'll be some strategies that you'll be able to implement straight away. And even if you think you've done it all with sleep, well, again, we do work with women who have had sleep issues for 10, 15, 20 years. And we are thrilled that, you know, for most of them, if not all of them, actually make huge gains in their sleep, even when they've tried it all, you know, whether that's supplements and medications, often that doesn't work for them long term anyhow, but uh, strategies, sleep strategies, all of it. So ah, let's look at this. So burnout, you know, one of the most common hallmarks, you know, of burnout is exhaustion. It's depletion. And so when women find themselves in a cycle where they feel tired and all they want is a great restful night's sleep and wake up and tomorrow be another day, but find themselves waking up and feeling unrefreshed, like looking through a, through a cloud or just having to drag themselves around, it gets very, very disheartening, right, Lucy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially when they're making effort to you know, get to bed earlier or, you know, carve out more time for rest and they're still waking, just feeling crap in the morning. It's very frustrating for them. It is, absolutely. And also they know that they should be sleeping better. I should be sleeping better. I should mm -hmm. be prioritising my sleep. And there's many, many factors that we want to look at as to why your sleep goes off with burnout. But let's just look at the fact that for some of us, we may be at that stage where we're not necessarily making the decision or prioritizing sleep. And this can be very common in burnout because there's so much to be done. For some women, it's a sense of, I know I should go to bed earlier, but this is me time. This is my time. <laughs> the kids are in bed. This is my time. And we get caught up with Netflix or we get caught up on our phone or this is where, oh my gosh, for the first time all day, I've actually got my brain back. That mm. can happen in burnout where, you know, this is a time where we should be unwinding, heading off to bed. But now all of a sudden that brain fog is sort of gone and I've got more clarity and I can think clearer. Quick, let me get on and do my work. In my to-do <laughs> list, yep, now's yes. the time. <laughs> Well, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning. Mm. So there's a lot of different ways that sleep dysfunction can show up in burnout. It could be mm. a sense of there's just this habit. It's a habitual pattern of not prioritizing sleep and just getting a few five or six hours. This can be somewhere you're sleeping, you're prioritizing it for 10 hours. It's just not enough. Or the yeah. quality is pretty crappy or you can't get to sleep or you wake up multiple times throughout the sleep. So we're going to be talking to all of that um, right now. So Lucy, tell me, why is sleep so, why do we prioritise sleep? Not just us, I mean, traditions, great, great traditions and healing traditions um, have, you know, really prioritised sleep as being one of the most magnificent tools for healing. Mm. And why is that? Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of processes change when we're in a, a sleep state. 
Um, you know, particularly when we're in a deep sleep, which actually happens about midway in between a sleep cycle. And so a lot of women that are in burnout are actually not getting that, that real deep sleep. And so they're missing out on slipping into this state where their body starts to slow down, your heart rate slows down, your breathing rate slows down, your temperature drops. And a lot of hormones are excreted from the brain, which talk to the various different systems in the body and enact healing and growth. And so if we're not getting a good quality sleep, we're not getting deep sleep, then our body is essentially not recuperating. We can't, um, you know, there's all these little things that are floating around that the body comes in and while we're sleeping, it essentially cleans them up. It mops up the mess that's mm. in our body and it repairs, you know, little broken links and, and whatnot that are in our cells. The, the brain is instructing the body to repair. And so if we don't sleep, we don't get that repair. We don't get that mopping up and our bodies can become very inflamed, and very mm. toxic. And we wake up feeling heavy and hungover. puffy <laughs> yeah. and hungover, absolutely. Yeah. And it's how our brain, really, you know, it's the time for us to release toxins from the brain, yeah. through the gut, as you said. It's just what I hear you say is let's balance. It's a time of harmony, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. And it. it's where the automatic processes take over to restore us back to a place of homeostasis essentially a complete body recalibration yeah yeah and so when you think about what leads us to burn out and how we can sort of no 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 I don't have time for sleep I've got all these other things or you know your brain just latches onto something and wants to think about it and think it over and ruminate it and ruminate it it's just nice to hear what Lucy has said to be able to go well actually because there's a bit of a payoff from the ego, isn't there? When it wants to have more time in the day and not necessarily prioritize sleep, it's like, well, yeah, but I'm going to be more productive. I have more time to get these things through. But when you hear what Lucy said, you kind of go, well, it doesn't really make sense because mm -hmm. this is a time where really my most valuable asset, which is myself, which is my health, which is my brain actually is repaired and rested. And so this is where we really have to support our clients to break some thinking patterns and behavior patterns when it comes to their sleep. Hey, Lucy, so that they can mm. really not just logically make a decision, oh, I need to sleep better, but truly be aligned with making the decision, okay, I need to prioritize sleep. It needs to be a priority. So when they understand the value of what sleep does for them from a productivity point of view, from a joy point of view, from a health point of view, it makes it easier yeah. for them to make that decision. Relying on willpower alone can be very difficult. <laughs> you know, you've got to have, well, it's, you've got to have your, your, your emotions behind it, you know, to back it. Yeah. And, and, and that's such a great, great point because you know you think about us and our emotional self and just like children what's the most one of the most important things that children need oh they need to have sleep otherwise their emotional self is gone from <laughs> I'm angry to I'm sad and guess what we we are just little kids grown up mm -hmm. and so if we are struggling with sleep, then what we will notice is that our willpower is in, well, it's, it's, a, it's a limited supply and the emotional self will come out, which is what underpins sabotage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I really deserve this extra piece of chocolate or let me know, I'm not going to go for an exercise, I'm going to sit and watch Netflix and because it feels so comfortable. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so that can be really a part of the pattern that mm -hmm. comes as a, as a downstream effect because we are sleep deprived mm -hmm. and we are tired 100 percent. how much is ideal sleep loose i think it's really different for each person um you know depending where you're at some women feel great with seven hours sleep others need nine you know it's just yeah others it, have 12 and they don't feel rested exactly exactly <laughs> Um, what I can comment on that is that our sleep cycles typically go in about 90 minute increments. And so some sleep specialists will suggest trying to um, sync your sleep within 90 minute intervals. So um, it could be six hours, seven and a half, 
nine, 12 and a half. And that means that you're waking at the end of a sleep cycle rather than waking midway through. That can be a big problem if you're, you know, if you're waking to an alarm clock every morning, you know, and then you're halfway through a sleep cycle, you're going to wake up just feeling really, so you feel, you know, if you've ever noticed that, like if you, you know, if you're woken artificially, it's a lot harder to get up and get going than it is if you're waking naturally. Mm. And so, you know, when it comes to an ideal amount of sleep, I, I would say there's not necessarily a, a set amount of hours, but it's more around how you wake um, and what you're doing the night before to give your body enough of an opportunity to rest. Uh, and yes. so I, I usually advise women to kind of give themselves a sleep window of about nine hours so that they can just allow their body to rest for, for that time if that's how long they and need. And it really depends on their health and their healing journey. We've got women who have been in chronic fatigue for years and years and years and years and years. And so for them, when they start working with us, they're still having a one to two hour nap each day and mm. having many, many hours of sleep overnight as well. And so it's all to be um, specific to your situation and your particular needs. And on that point of waking up to the alarm clock, I just, you know, I've, there's certainly some interesting research and I guess uh, approaches out there that look at, well, you know, maybe it's best if you wake up and actually get out of that first that on that first alarm because if you allow yourself to go back down into it then you're going to be you you know halfway through sleep yeah and you start to find yourself you have this latency like you kind of get that Mm. hangover for the rest of the day and so Mm. it's it is about about creating healthy patterns with it but Looking at that, you know, a lot of our clients come in going, I just need to get up on that first alarm. I just need to get up earlier and own my day. And I just need to, you know, and they put a lot of pressure on the morning routine. And we want, we encourage our women to own their day and to really, a lot of that is around the morning routine. However, the focus really needs to be on not the morning because that's that doesn't work. Have you noticed that, guys? If you're <laughs> finding that you're struggling with sleep, you know, and you just keep, oh, I just got to get out of the, got to get out of bed early. I just got to do. More. The focus really needs to be on how do you end your day. Mm-hmm. So start with the nighttime routine. If you want a great morning routine, start with your nighttime routine. Yeah. So, Luce, let's have a look at that a little bit in terms of, you know, what do you see as some of the common culprits? the common factors or the things that women are facing that is kind of sabotaging their quality Mm. of sleep? Probably one of the biggest ones would be our exposure to screens and light. Hello, Zoom. Um, Yeah, you know, we, we, in today's world, we, you know, we're, we're, we do everything on our phones and we work late and, you know, all of these things where we've constantly got a screen in our face and, That can be uh, really, really bad for sleep for a number of reasons. One being that the actual, the light entering into our eyes actually impacts our sleep hormone melatonin. So we don't have enough melatonin to fall asleep or stay asleep for the full night. And the other thing can be is that we're constantly plugged in, you know, if we're we're reading the the news. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, if we're, and same thing, if what we're watching on TV, you know, can have an impact if we are watching crime thrillers and then our minds are, you know, playing it over and ruminating on it or um, Or working late. And and you haven't dealt with the day. And this Mm -hmm. is pretty common. This is really what we see is like women want to escape. They want to disconnect from the day. And so they will Netflix, um, Netflix, Ben, you know, have a binge there. And then that finishes, but they haven't actually stopped and processed their day. Yeah. And so when are you going to process your day? Well, the body helps you with that and says three o'clock in the morning sounds like a good good idea, right? Yeah. And so it is that pattern where it's it we've just got that excess energy. We've got the excess experience where we haven't necessarily processed it. And and the fact is, is that our life is on screens more often. And it also means that we're not outside. And we were just talking about that, Lucy, we're not outside Mm. and, 
and exercising or you know getting the imp the 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 sunlight to really support us in our sleep wake cycle as well so did you want to talk a little bit about the sleep wake cycle lucy because that's yeah sure. a good understanding you mentioned melatonin before yeah melatonin is just one hormone that instructs our body when we should feel sleepy and when we should feel awake uh, cortisol is another uh, very important hormone. This is kind of the, the opposite of melatonin. It helps us to, to be alert. And um, it is supposed to go in a bit of a curve throughout the day. So our cortisol should really be peaking about an hour after we wake up. And then it should remain relatively high throughout the day. It does slowly kind of come down and it should really be at its lowest when we're ready to, to go to sleep at night. But for a number of different reasons, our cortisol can yo-yo. Um, you know, it could be that we have a really slow rise in cortisol in the morning. This is why you feel really sluggish and really There's hard no to Disney get going. There's no Disney music playing. There's no <laughs> yeah. opening up the curtains with the Disney. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's dragging <laughs> yourself off to work. And, yeah. Yeah. But melatonin will be high then. So exactly, yeah. So these, these hormones, the little dance they're doing with each other, it starts, you know, it's supposed to follow a nice, pretty, you know, graph <laughs> and it's not doing that. It's, you know, everything's getting out of whack and the hormone uh, levels are, are at the incorrect amounts throughout the day. And so it could be that our cortisol is really low throughout the day, but then it's starting to peak in there. You know, it's going up in the evening. Mm. It's higher than it should be and we, why we feel energised at night wide but tired and we've got things on our mind and we've got a busy mind yeah. and this is why we have to break those patterns of mm. working late at night but dr fee it's when i think the best it's me time yeah i get it but what do you really want do you really want to have a fresh a really restful sleep and wake up with cortisol or do you want to keep this same pattern playing out and we have to look at mm. our behaviors and our coping mechanisms to help with that and then a lot, I think it's, if we're thinking about, um, you know, other, well, let's have a look at how, you know, we can support our, our listeners to help with sleep. We've kind of got an idea that there's a, there's a hormonal picture happening here, you know, mm. between melatonin and cortisol, and that there are some behavioral factors and there's some lifestyle things that are impacting how we sleep. But let's look at in terms of one might start with, um, you know, supplements. A lot of people, if you went to your, your doctor, I guess the solution there is a sleep tablet. And most doctors probably, and again, this is something you can speak to your own GP about. And all of the advice that we're talking here, remember, is general. Just a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's general in nature. And we do get, we really do encourage you to find an awesome, awesome medical practitioner to help you if you are having chronic sleep issues. But, you know, I guess if we just have a look at some of the key nutrients that can be helpful and key um, support and why that would be, Luz, what would you sort of recommend if for our clients in terms of when they come and have had mm. terrible sleep for many years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of nutrients that I'd be looking at to see if there's any deficiencies there. Those that we know are particularly important for our nervous system. So things like magnesium and B vitamins. Um, so yeah, from, from that sort of supplemental point of view, that would be potentially what I'd be looking at more from a dietary perspective. It's kind of looking at, well, what are we eating in the evening that could be stimulating our body? And so, um, if we're eating sugar late at night or if we're, we're drinking caffeine throughout the day, these are all things that are artificial stimulants, um, and can impact the, us getting off to sleep and also the, the quality of our sleep. Mm. And it's yeah. a really important one, especially if you're finding that you're waking up, you know, after midnight, midnight between two o'clock. Um, and you might notice you've got a bit of a sugar craving. You might notice that you feel like you need to go have a snack. Mm -hmm. um, your sugar could actually drop. And mm -hmm. what we find is if you, you know, you have a high sugar before you go to sleep, your insulin, insulin rises and cortisol and they do a little dance. And then what happens is that you can have a sugar crash that causes you to wake. So yeah. there's something to think about in terms of, um, yeah, how all of our hormones, you love this. Now I'm, we're, now I'm mentioning insulin, you know, <laughs> which is another one of wonderful hormone and of course our other hormones are our sex hormones have you noticed your sleep go off <laughs> with your cycle oh mm. there might be a, a bigger picture here and I just wanted to paint that 
So mm. magnesium, vitamin, uh, vitamin Bs, except for some people just not to take vitamin Bs at night. So just check if you're on supplements, then make sure you're not creating any harm by taking them wrong. Uh, yeah. in the wrong way so making sure some people are just fine yeah some of those bees can make them feel a little more alert give them a little energy so obviously if that's if that you get that kind of reaction from bee vitamins then you ideally wouldn't be taking at night taking it earlier in the day and know that that will still support your sleep at night because you still do need those bee vitamins to make our our healthy sleep hormones Mm, yeah absolutely and then you know a lot of other people will suggest things like melatonin as a mm -hmm. way of supporting sleep for a longer period of time and you know I guess with all of this we're not a, opposed to sleeping tablets or melatonin or mag or b and nutrition it's all wonderful but what we're really wanting you to understand is there's something else at play here right mm -hmm. yeah Know, there's something that is out of balance and again this is feedback from the body this wired but tired state is suggesting hey wait a minute i'm at a point of depletion there's imbalance there's, there's, there's this disharmony happening and as we've just mentioned all of our hormones talk together and if our cortisol is too high too low erratic it's going to impact our melatonin which is our sleep and it might be impacting your weight have you noticed an associated weight issue are you getting sugar cravings are you getting the hangries have you noticed that you've got cycle issues going on low libido or regular cycle or you know pms happening oh if so well, that makes sense, right? Because all of our hormones speak together. Yeah. And so all of those nutrients, nutrition, it's all important, but really from our perspective and how we do get women sleeping better, even when there's anxiety at night and though it's been long-term and all of that is really to look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And the bigger picture is helping them to get out of a state of being triggered living life and pressure and it's really that that influences the cortisol mm -hmm. stress is a beautiful thing our body can really handle stress in a wonderful beautiful way but it needs to switch off it has a purpose it has a purpose it definitely has a purpose it's just yeah that it's it's triggered too often for a lot of for a lot of women and stay in that state you know mm. why you know stress is a very much it has a purpose in that it helps us to think it helps us to act we get crystal clear focus we can isolate the threat and we can act accordingly that is the we need it for emergencies 100 mm. percent. yeah but the problem is is in a state of burnout and overwhelm and juggling multiple things and feeling powerless and stuck and out of control is that that cortisol the physiological effect is a downturn, you know, downstream consequence and sleep is going to be a part of that. So what, what to do about that? Well, because that's a really big topic. And, you know, I think most experts with sleep will talk about having a, a really solid sleep um, routine, you know. And Lucy, did you want to talk about some of the things that we do with our clients in terms yeah, of definitely. helping them to prioritise sleep, first of all, and set themselves up to sleep well? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we get all of our clients to do a nighttime routine, which doesn't have to be long. You know, it's quite a, a short practice, but it's an opportunity for the brain to start to slow down, to finish processing any of the, you know, the thoughts and the, the worries of the day um, mm. and to get us into a, a parasympathetic state or rest and digest state so that our body is prepped for sleep. And so um, we, we can bring some breath practices into that. We also uh, do gratitude at night, focusing on the emotion of gratitude. That, that has a lot of uh, positive studies behind it and how that can impact our well-being overall and our sleep. So it's a, it's a great one. And it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't you know, have to be two hours long. <laughs> you know, even sitting for five minutes and, and doing this for five minutes can have an impact on the quality of your sleep and resultantly how you feel the next day yeah and it's bookmarking that it's like bookending the day you know it's yeah. like that line so that you can oh, all right and now i'm present now what i'm needed to do is to go to sleep yeah. and rest 
and recover and wake up tomorrow in a whole new way with enthusiasm and vitality. And so that's a great place to start. And then we also really help our clients to zoom out a little bit and look down at life in a different perspective. And it's like the things and how we handle things throughout the day, you know, obstacles that happen or challenges that happen, because this is life, <laughs> 2021, 2020, you know, living in the time of Corona is teaching us that uncertainty and how we handle those, you know, our workplace and our, and our family life um, obstacles or challenges mm. actually as we handle them better and really grow and our, it, it becomes a positive uh, cycle for us, you know, mm. as we feel more energized, we feel stronger. When we're more present, we can handle what is. When we handle what is, we feel more confident. And from that place, we have more energy. We have more energy to give the people we love. Oh my goodness, can you see where we're heading now? Now I'm in a state where I'm feeling like I'm doing a great job. Awesome. Now I come home. Now I can switch off. Now I can rest and I wake up and tomorrow what's happening? And so it's also from that perspective, recognizing it's not just sleep, it's the symptom of overall how we are and how we're being mm. and how we're embracing life. Mm -hmm. Meeting our needs throughout the day so that we can actually give ourselves the opportunity to wind down and rest at night. You know, just bringing it back to that point you were making earlier around how that can be our precious downtime, you know, that last hour of the evening and how that can often sabotage our sleep. I think what you've touched on there is, you know, if we're really looking after our needs and, um, addressing the way that we respond to stress throughout the day, then we d you don't need that that hour at the end of the day anymore. There we it's, go. And know. I know for a lot of people, they'll be like, yeah, but you don't know my life. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand what I'm in. And I was like, well, we're pretty, we work with pretty uh, high achiever, high perfectionistic type gals who uh, want to do a lot of great stuff in life and carrying a lot. And yes, even they they can shift those patterns to be better meeting their needs so that they are more, so they can be more, you know, enjoy life more, but be more in their relationships at work. And a lot of women may feel like, oh, that means that I'm going to have to give something up. If I'm spending time on myself during the day, then I won't be able to be in that role as mum, or I might have to give up that precious time at work. But actually, that's not what we're talking about. When we make these changes in terms of how we meet our needs, what happens is that things shift and transform in our work, even promotions, massive opportunities, growth, and at the same time, the quality that we have, the time that we have with our family is so much better. And yes, I know we're talking about getting out of the state of wide and but tired, but you've got to understand it's, it's the body screaming out saying, you're not meeting my needs right now. Mm -hmm. What about me? Wake yeah. up, you know, because really if you're sleeping and you're waking up, it's that hypervigilant state to go, you know, primitive state of like, well, primitive reflex. It's like, wait up, where's the threat? Where's mm. the threat? Sleep with one eye, one eye open. And so guys, what a big topic. But it's a rich one. And Lucy yeah. and I, when we, when we started, this was like, man, we're going to speak for like two hours. <laughs> we talk about <laughs> sleep for a long time. <laughs> and also, honestly, if you're now ready for a sleep, well, give yourself some love and compassion. <laughs> and get yourself sorted out and have a nice sleep and know that actually, what if that's exactly what's required to help you to wake up and be even more productive tomorrow? Mm, yeah. yeah. And if you struggle with it, and you feel like you're doing all of that, it's okay. It's okay. It just means you haven't got the bigger picture. It means that there are some deeper patterns. There's some root cause, um, other causes at play here that you just need a different perspective. And people like Lucy and myself to look at, to help you to really understand, you, you know, it's like you can have all of these main pieces lining up, but it's missing something. And it's that something that just put it into place and it all just falls into mm -hmm. place, you know. And when that happens, what a feeling because it's nothing better than waking up after years of crappy sleep going, mm. wow. 
such relief in that. Yeah. Well, what a pleasure, Lucy. Thank you so much for jumping on again with me today. My pleasure. It's been fun. <laughs> awesome. So here's to all of you gorgeous women resting, getting out of that wide but tired space and doing it in such a way where you get to be more. And here's to you finding your bliss. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If you want to subscribe, just click on my head beneath this so that you can subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to book a call with our amazing team to have that life-changing conversation, then click on the button beneath this that says book a call. Or you can go to our website, which is findingbliss.com.au forward slash apply and make sure that you fill in that application form so that we know a little bit about you. We can better prepare for the session and serve you in a more meaningful way. Awesome. Stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you on the next show. Bye-bye.